Hi guys and welcome to another video of Ancient Greece Reloaded. In this video we will talk about the Oracle of Delphi, the Delphi Commandments and we will also try to explain Delphi's simples and principles, something that is not so very well known to many people. Before we jump into it, please do not forget to like our video and to subscribe to our channel. In this way you help others by spreading the word of the project called Ancient Greece Reloaded and we thank you for that guys. Also, look at the video description below in which we provide direct links to all of the source material that has been used for this video. To our subject, when it comes to the Oracle of Delphi and its commandments, if a researcher wants to study it correctly and accurately, then he or she will need to mainly focus on two areas. 1. What Delphi's principles were and what the symbol represents. 2. The famous commandments of Delphi. Let us begin with the second parameter. The Delphi Commandments were roughly 148 in number, as Ancient Greece Reload we propose that our translation is accurate when compared to other existing translations. Why we suggest that, which were the Delphi Commandments and what their translation is, you can read all about it by visiting the main page of our website or by clicking on the relevant direct link which is provided in the video description below. The reason why we do not illustrate them in this video is because due to their large number, the video would turn into something like a 2 hour long lecture, which would suck. Consequently, in this video we will focus on the first factor, Aka, we will explain to you the secrets of Delphi's simple and the doctrines which were reflected in their belief system. That being said, let us take a look on how the Oracle of Delphi functioned and what their main secrets were. The famous Oracle of Delphi Usually, the ancient Greek priests did not give advices nor did they hear any confessions but they were primarily focused on fulfilling their duties, you know guys, praying to the gods etc. The ethical education and guidance of the common citizens, although it started off with their educators, known as pedagogy, eventually it continued in the oracles. The oracles, besides foretelling future events, due to godly enlightenment, they also provided a plethora of commandments that acted like advices for various circumstances of everyday life. The top position amongst oracles was held by the famous Delphi. Delphi's commandments were written on the walls of a small temple right before reaching the main temple of Apollo and on columns which were placed around Apollo's temple. On the pediment of Apollo's temple were written the three most famous of Delphi's commandments, which could be easily seen by the visitor while approaching the temple. Bottom left, Gnothis Afton, meaning know thyself. Bottom right, Miden Agan, meaning nothing in excess. At the center top and between the aforementioned two and Delphi's E or E, Plutarch, the famous priest of Delphi, who was also a famous biographer slash writer, wrote an entire treatise by exploring the long lost meaning of that commandment. In his treatise, Plutarch proposes various explanations of the commandment and Delphi's E or pronounced E. In a nutshell, his propositions are and Delphi's E is connected through holy arithmology with God Apollo himself or with the Pythagorean number, the first and absolute cause of everything. Proposition number two. And Delphise is connected with what priests would say when praying to the god Ether. The English equivalent would be, may you will come true. And Delphise via Aeon, and the E is given to the philosophers by Apollo himself, because nothing that exists without a cause and no reasoning, like a syllogism, can come without a logical hypothesis. A final proposition is that through the letter E or Epsilon, God welcomes the visitor by saying Gnothis Afton, the visitor replies, E meaning you are, you exist, and through his reply the visitor acknowledges A the existence of the god Apollo and B that the god is one, E-N, because Apollo from Apolline is not meant for the many, aka the uninitiated people. Moreover, the three main commandments of Delphi form a harmonic triangle that also explains the meaning of Epsilon or E. In other terms, the state of E, meaning you are, you exist, at the top of the triangle can only be obtained by attaining self-awareness, gnosis afton, aka know thyself, and by following the middle road, aka acting in harmony and in balance, miden agan, nothing in excess. The two corners of the triangle, when connected, meet at the top and Delphi's E or E. And guys, this is a simple example of what is known as holy geometry. Simple, okay. <clears throat> Finally, which also is another example of holy geometry, the aforementioned explanation can be witnessed in the letter Epsilon. You have three horizontal lines which represent the three main commandments. Once the individual is able to complete the two base commandments or requirements, the person is able to reach the third commandment, the third horizontal line. 
which in turn makes the individual an enlightened one, represented by the vertical line that connects all three horizontal lines and those forming the letter Epsilon. What is more, if you have studied the Oracle of Delphi and the ancient Greek texts, you should have come across the following letter or symbol. As you can see, the symbol consists of two Epsilons. So let us analyze the symbol. What the first Epsilon stands for, we have already talked about. Hence, what does the second reversed Epsilon stand for? Have you guys ever heard of the following saying? As above, so below. In other terms, the one Epsilon refers to the spiritual world, aka the heavens, while the second one refers to our world in which all images are reflected on, which is also discussed in Plato's ideas, also known as Plato's theory of forms. Moreover, there are a few additional explanations regarding the letter Epsilon. 1. The three horizontal lines, starting from top to bottom, represent accordingly the spirit, the soul and the earth, and when combined together, these three factors are reflected in the body, the vertical line. 2. The three horizontal lines, starting from top to bottom, represent accordingly the spirit, the soul and the body, and together they give us the perfect number 1. In this case, the epsilon is referring to the three aspects of existence which form the perfect unity. In order for you guys to understand it better, here is another example which is drawn from esoteric science. The three aforementioned attributes are represented through water, the basis of our life form. The spirit is represented by steam or vapor, the soul by water and the body by ice. What is more, Heraclitus used a lot the term dry soul. So why is that? Because if our soul dries, it becomes vapor, which is the lightest form of water. Hence it moves into the spiritual world, a higher world. If our soul becomes heavier or colder, then it turns into ice, hence it will become chained in a physical world, aka the material world and bound to the material things. What is more, Heraclitus also stated that Psychis in thanatos idor genesthe, idati the thanatos gin genesthe, ek gis the idor ginete, ex idatos the psychi, which roughly translates as For the soul, death is to become water, and for water, death is to become earth, and from earth it becomes water, and from water it becomes soul. So, what did Heraclitus refer to at this point? In one word, reincarnation. In his saying, he did not use the term spirit or vapor, which means that the spirit slash vapor is immortal, while our bodies, etc., are reincarnated. In case you get confused and wonder, hold on, what about the soul here? According to esoteric science, the soul is just the intermediate for a spirit to enter the body. Eventually, the soul fades away after we die. The ego, in terms of awareness and existence, are attributes of the spirit. Ok guys, before we confuse you any further, we will stop here with the above deciphering. Now, let us explain something more about the commandments. The Delphi commandments, which originally were considered as Apollo's own proverbs, were later credited to the famous seven pre-Socratic sages, which were Cleobolus of Lindos, Solon of Athens, Helon of Sparta, Vias of Priene, Thales of Miletus, Pitakos of Mytilene, and Periander of Corinth. Overall, the Oracle of Delphi did play a vital part in shaping the ethos of the ancient Greeks, based on the model of Gnothis Afton, meaning know thyself, Miden Agan, nothing in excess, which led to the individual's enlightenment, E. To summarize, the Delphi commandments were small sentences consisting of two to five words, yet filled with wisdom, aiming to provide advices and instructions to the people so as for them to live in virtue. When all the commandments are put together, they form by themselves an entire ethical system. That being said, and before we close the video, let us make a quick mention to the famous Pythia, in a nutshell. Pythia was the name of the high priestess of the Temple of Apollo at Delphi, who also served as the oracle commonly known as the Oracle of Delphi. As said, the priestess of the Oracle at Delphi became known as the Pythia after the place name Pytho, which Greeks explained as the name after the rotting Pythin of the slain serpent's corpse. Remember guys, Python of Delphi was the serpent that got Apollo killed. So, how did the oracle get high, shaman style, so as to deliver the prophecies? The key word, or in this case the key plant, was laurel. According to the poet Lucian, the priestess of Apollo, known as the Pythia, reputedly chewed laurel leaves from a sacred tree growing inside the temple to induce the trance from which she uttered the oracular prophecies for which she was famous for. On some other accounts, starting in the 4th century BC, they described her as shaking a laurel branch while delivering her prophecies. Bottom line is this, if you know how to do it, yes, you can get high and enter 
and altered awareness, but if you do not know how to do it, laurel can become toxic or even poisonous. So guys, stick with cooking and be safe. And at this point we have reached the end of our video. If you would like to read more about what we did discuss in this video, check out the links provided in the video description below. If you want to talk to us directly, you can visit our forum. And do not forget to like our video and to subscribe to our channel so as to support the project of Ancient Greece Reloaded. Thanks for watching and stay tuned for our upcoming videos.